matching patterns and today I'm going to walk you through the Betty dress tutorial. This is one of our first patterns we've released for Rooney and you can also see our other first release which is the lowest wrap onesie for babies. That is linked below and you can also find it in our shop. So today we're going to walk through the Betty dress which is a flowy easy to throw on dress. It's like my dream dress and by the end of this you'll probably want to make it in every color because you'll see how easy it is to actually make. You can find the pattern at RooneyClothing.com and print it out or have it shipped to you and we'll walk through this together. We're going to start out with cutting out our pattern pieces on the grain line. So the grain line is this selvage edge. It's kind of like the manufactured edge on all fabrics that you'll find at the fabric store. The reason you want to cut all of your pattern pieces parallel to this line is because all fabric has a natural stretch and flow to it. And when you're cutting along the grain line, you'll make sure your finished product has the perfect flow that the fabric is calling for. You'll create a more beautiful and wearable product. To cut out your pattern, you're going to fold your fabric in half, make sure you're looking at the grain line, and lay your largest pieces first on the fold. We're going to cut out these pieces first, and then we're going to refold our fabric and lay out the remaining pieces of our pattern to make sure we are preserving the fabric. After you have all of your pattern pieces, you're going to go around to every triangle and make a little slit. This will be a notch that you will use to line up to the rest of your pattern pieces. Now take your front and back pieces and as the right sides are together, you're going to pin your front and back pieces together at the shoulder, matching up your notches. Make sure you have coordinating thread and a bobbin and then you're going to sew the shoulder seams together with a half inch seam allowance. Along the seams that you just sewed together, you're going to go back and use a zigzag stitch, or you can also do this with a serger or a zigzag shears, and you're just going to go along the edges to make sure there's no fraying. As you're sewing throughout this project, when you have finished sewing a seam together, always just iron it down in place. This will make sure it's just a nice, flat, clean seam. Now you'll stitch along the entire neckline at a quarter inch. This will make sure that the neckline doesn't stretch while you keep working. And don't forget to pivot along the points of the V shape in your neckline. Set this aside, and then you're gonna get the top tiers of your skirt. So first you're gonna grab the front top tier of your skirt and you're gonna unpin it. Make sure you've already cut out all the notches, which is where the triangles are on the pattern. So you unpin your pattern and you unfold it like this and you're going to sew a gather stitch. So a gather stitch is just a loose stitch along the top. We're gonna do two along the top to just make a nice um, gather. And this is what's going to kind of like shrink up the skirt and make it full and flowy and nice and so this is actually a lot easier than you might think so you're going to come to your sewing machine and the stitch length you're going to go up to as big as it can go so along the top at a fourth of an inch and then i'm going to do the same thing and go right under it at half an inch and this is just gonna leave two long threads that I can pull and make that really nice gather. I don't need to do a back stitch. I just lift up my presser foot and then I'm gonna leave a tail right here of thread. And then I'm gonna show you how to gather the fabric. Grab the bobbin threads of your new gather stitch at the top and gently just pull it and guide the fabric and the thread to bunch up the fabric gently. Now you're going to find your midpoint notches on the bottom of your bodice piece and the top of your skirt tier. So you're going to match these together, right sides together, and make sure you're pinning them in place. Now as you look at your gather stitches, you're going to pull the bobbin thread that you previously worked on and pull it tight so the top of your skirt piece is gathered enough to fit the bottom edge of your bodice. I like to do a gentle gather at first and then 
line it up to the front bodice and just spread it out a little bit further and kind of play with it until the gathers are kind of uniform and look really nice and the outside edges are lining up. Now on every tier that is pinned together, you're going to go across and give it a half inch seam allowance, and then you can follow up with a zigzag stitch. You can also use an overlock machine or zigzag scissors. Now it's time to pin and sew your sleeves. So you're gonna take your sleeves and look at the hill shape and find where the double notches are on the hill shape. Now look for the shoulder notch at the top of your heel and the single notch on the other side of the heel shape and pin it all together. Make sure everything is pinned in place and double check how everything is lining up and you're going to want to sew this together with the half inch seam allowance. To double check if the right side is facing down, you can find your shoulder seam and if it's facing up and facing you, then that's correct. Using the zigzag setting on your machine or your serger, or you could also do this with zigzag shears, you can stitch along the new armhole sleeve after you've done your half inch seam allowance. Okay, now we've sewn the sleeve, so you'll see we just have like a giant dress and it's not connected. So now we're going to pin the sleeves together and then the side seams sew that on both sides and then we'll really have a dress. Right sides facing together again you're going to pin all the way down the side seams and the arms on your dress making sure all the notches are lining up in place. You can also see where the tiers will line up perfectly and this is where you just want to do another half inch seam allowance along the side. Then go back and do your zigzag stitch you can also use a serger, overlock stitch, or a zigzag shears. Now fold your sleeves up one inch to make the casing for the elastic. Sew all the way around the sleeve opening, but leave two inches before you finish the loop so you can thread the elastic through this area. Take two safety pins and on one end of your elastic, you're going to insert the safety pin and then on the other end you're going to add the safety pin and then connect that to your sleeve opening so you don't lose your elastic as you're threading it through your armhole. After you have threaded your elastic all the way through the casing and reached the other side you're going to overlap each end of the elastic about one inch and sew across. Then you're going to close up the opening of the casing that you previously kept open and sew that as well. Okay, we're almost finished with the Betty dress. Um, now we just have to do the neckline and hem the bottom and we'll be finished. Unpin your front and back neck facing and there's notches on the shoulder seams where you can line these up and sew at half an inch seam allowance. To cut the ties for your dress, you can use two strips of scrap fabric measuring 24 inches by one inch. Fold up the bottom and iron about a quarter of an inch of this strip. Then fold the strip in thirds and then one more time over on itself. Sew along the edge. Turn your dress right side out and now we're going to connect the neck facing and the ties to the neckline. With the right side of the dress and the right side of the neck facing, we're going to pin these together 
And when you get to the shoulder seams, you can find the notches and line up the neck facing to the dress. And then also at the V, you can pin that in place. And at the top of the V, you will add your ties in the corners and you want to sandwich these in between the neck facing and the dress. Sew along your neckline and make sure when you get to the V and where your ties are, you're picking up your presser foot and pivoting along these corners. So you finish your neck facing and it's sewed in place. Now I'm going to flip over the neck facing and just make slits along the V shape. This will make sure that the extra fabric is not bunching up. It'll allow the V to really be more prominent and take the shape that it is intended to. You can sew a quarter of an inch around the neckline on the outside of the fabric. This will make sure that the neck facing is laying flat, but this is totally up to you and I usually skip this step. Now we're just going to finish our dress by hemming the bottom. You can press the bottom up fourth of an inch and then another fourth of an inch with your iron and then sew all along the bottom of your dress. That's it for the Betty dress tutorial. I loved walking through this process together and I would love to see what you made. So you can tag me on Instagram at Rooney Clothing. Our next pattern we are releasing for women is a lounge set and it is so cozy. It is so simple to make. I promise you will love it. So subscribe to our channel so you can see when that pattern is available. And in the meantime, you can sew the lowest wrap onesie for babies and I've linked that below. We have new videos every week so don't forget to subscribe and follow along so you'll know when those are available. I'll see you next time.